All right, freshmen, this is day five notes for uh, Monday, April 11th. And again, I know there's a number of you who have gone temporarily virtual, so hopefully this will help you. All right, so we left off in day four notes uh, talking about the passage of the Civil Rights Act. So <clears throat> there was a uh, coalition formed between all of our major civil rights organizations we've discussed, uh, SNCC, the Student uh, Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, CORE, NAACP and SCLC formed a coalition called COFO, Council of Federated Organizations. Their goal is to register voters in Mississippi. Now, of all the southern states, Mississippi was the most difficult uh, to change. Uh, was, the population was roughly 60 to 65 uh, percent African American. They were a majority of the state, and uh, but none of them were voting. And so uh, it had been nicknamed the closed society because pretty much uh, every town, uh, especially those with majority African-American populations, had figured out ways to deny the right to vote. And so the uh, plan by COFO was to send thousands of Northern College students, many of them white, not all, but many of them, uh, to attempt to register black Mississippians to vote. So there were two uh, organizations within Mississippi that held much of the power. The first was at the state level. It was called the Mississippi Sovereignty Commission out of Jackson, the capital. And at the local and county level was the White Citizens Council. Both of these groups were designed completely to push for white supremacy, to maintain white supremacy. And so with the rumor passing that 30,000 Northerners were going to be uh, you know, coming to the state to try to register voters, they perceived it as an invading hostile force, okay? Now, as I talked about in the in-person classes, 30,000 was completely outrageous. Um, the most uh, workers that they could probably get was between one and 5,000. It was a big risk. And these Northerners were told, you know, the likelihood that you're going to get uh, threatened is pretty much 100%. The likelihood that you're going to be beaten or arrested is probably close to 100%. And the chance that you could get killed is pretty high as well. So not a lot of people wanted to do that. Well, just a few days after they arrived, three civil rights workers... James Cheney, who was a Mississippi native, Andrew Goodman, college student from New York, and the youngest, he was only 20, and uh, Mickey Michael Schwerner, but he went by Mickey, uh, 19, or 24 years old, he was the oldest. Uh, they went missing. They had gone uh, to investigate the burning of a church. They were arrested by uh, a sheriff named Cecil Price out of the town of Philadelphia. They were released, and then that night, they went missing, okay? Um, we now know that uh, they had been released. Price was involved. Um, after they crossed the city lines, a uh, group of individuals, largely uh, locals, uh, some Klansmen, uh, stopped the car. They surrounded it. They shot Goodman and Schwerner point blank in the heads. And then uh, we don't know if it happened before or after, but Cheney, um, according to one report, ran and uh, they beat him and then they shot him. So Cheney, the only African-American, had beating uh, injuries as well. Uh, <clears throat> they were missing for nearly two months, okay? Um, they were not found till early August. We now know the reason why. Um, nobody was talking. Nobody was talking at all. And uh, we found out later that a uh, Mississippi Highway Patrolman by the name of Maynard King uh, knew about it and I guess had a crisis of conscience and he reported that he knew where the bodies were, though he called himself Mr. X. And we did not find out his actual um, identity until uh, like 2007. So we didn't find out until well after his death that he had reported that he knew where they were. They found the men in an earthen dam uh, on the property actually owned by one of the individuals who were arrested. Now, the strange thing is in the process of looking for these three men, they found other bodies other missing African-American bodies. I think I said 15 in class. I'm not sure if it was that high, um, but they weren't able to identify a lot of them because they were so, uh, you know, they had been dead for so long they couldn't make any identifications. This is before DNA evidence. Um, COFO did not have a lot of success getting uh, Mississippians to register to vote. They were afraid. They were more afraid of the Sovereignty Commission and the Citizens Councils and the Klan and other groups like that than they were wanting to vote. So even though Freedom Summer was not really a success in terms of getting people to vote, um, it did lead to a push for a new Voting Rights Act. All right, so the next year, 
um, we had the voting rights issue in 1965. Now, by this time, southern states, uh, if you remember from Reconstruction Unit, they used to use things like the grandfather clause, the poll tax, the literacy test. Well, the grandfather clause was gone. Uh, the poll tax was used until 1964, but Congress passed the 24th Amendment tax could no longer be used in federal elections. So if you ever look at the amendments and wonder why that worked its way in there, um, it was a racial issue. It was not, you know, whites did not have to pay the poll tax, just African Americans. So now we were down to just the literacy test. Well, uh, Martin Luther King decided that um, the next stage, the voting rights issue, was going to be pressed in Alabama. He was not going to go back to Mississippi. They'd not had much success there. So they're going to move over to Alabama, and they choose the town of Selma. Okay. Now, Selma was chosen for two reasons. One, uh, the town was between 60 and 70 percent African American, and yet almost none of them voted. And two, Sheriff Jim Clark was an avowed racist. He had made comments that he would not allow any kind of marches or civil rights actions, and it was suspected and later proven that he uh, had deputies who were Klan members or he deputized Klan members uh, to deal with African Americans who got out of line. So the plan was to march from Selma to the capital of Montgomery, which was about 50 miles, called it the March for Freedom. Well, uh, Clark was not going to let that happen. So he called out the Mississippi State Guard. The first march, uh, they crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge. When they get to the other side, um, and we watched a clip from the movie Selma, and if you've ever seen that movie, you kind of know what I'm talking about. The bridge itself was high in the middle. It, had a, it went up to an arc to allow for ships to pass underneath. So as the marchers were marching to the Edmund Pettus Bridge, they didn't know that on the other side was a whole group of Mississippi patrolmen, Sheriff Jim Clark and his deputized Klansmen, and then others who just chose to participate. And they will attack the marchers, and of course, it's all broadcast, as you can see, on live TV, okay? Um, after this, which again, most of the Americans watch this, um, President Johnson is going to push the Voting Rights Act. Federal officials can now run elections. They can actually take over and run elections when state and local election boards are you know, acting inappropriately, meaning denying the right to vote to minorities. No literacy tests, those are gone. And um, by this point, both of the major goals, civil rights and voting rights have been achieved. Now, as we talked about in the in-person classes, Voting Rights Act was actually, part of it was nullified about seven years ago, 2013, so eight years ago. Um, there is a new push, actually, after the 2020 election and the accusations of, of voter fraud, there is a new push to pass a new Voting Rights Act at the federal level by President Biden, and it would be named for John Lewis, who was beaten here in this uh, 1965 Selma march, okay? All right, your questions. Number one, what was Freedom Summer? Two, who was killed during this period? Three, despite its perceived failure, what positive came out of the Freedom Summer? Four, what did the 24th Amendment do? Five, why was Selma chosen for the march? Six, what was the march to freedom? Where was the march to freedom to and from? Seven, what happened on the Edmund Pettus Bridge? And eight, what did the Voting Rights Act do? Okay, we'll pick up tomorrow. We'll talk about the next phase, which is trying to achieve integration in our cities and going after issues of poverty and urban decay. Okay, so we're going to focus uh, out of the South and really move north to our urban areas where African Americans had congregated in the inner cities.